Yo, what's up with y'all, man? I hope you're doing good. If you're new and you're a fan of the NBA, subscribe to this channel. So let's get straight into it. Breakout. As time has gone on, I feel like this term right here has lost its true meaning. So before I see any comments regarding certain players who should be on this list, I want to try to set the criteria and requirements of what is and is not a breakout player. So this term just doesn't apply to NBA players. It applies to everyone in any aspect of life. When a person has a breakout year, Wait, did I have one? They experience a sudden surge of great production and success after a couple years of being mediocre, average, or below average. So with that being said, second year players do not belong on this list because they're supposed to naturally progress into better players. And it's certainly expected for some of them to dramatically improve from their rookie year. So since these sophomores don't have enough years under their belt, that means no Kyle Kuzma, no John Collins, and no De'Aaron. Aaron Fox. All three of those dudes are having beastly seasons, especially De'Aaron Fox, as I thought he would. I'm a genius. He has Sacramento surprisingly in the playoff race, which is something that I literally thought would be impossible to do this soon. But whoa, 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 let's slow down for a sec, because the Sacramento Kings success as of recent is a collective effort. They're all doing this as one. Coach Dave Yeager has done a great job managing their young guys and transforming their offense. Willie Colley Stein has improved. Iman Shumpert has had a great bounce back year and has surprisingly been one of the most vital pieces to their success. But Dave, Shump, Willie, and Fox probably could not do all of this without that man, that bad man, Buddy Heald. Buddy, without a single doubt in my mind, has finally found his groove and has taken off this year and has emerged as one of the NBA's best young stars. In a matter of just a few months, prior to this season, Buddy has had a pretty mediocre career as a pro so far. He's been in the league for three years now, and although he was a lottery pick in 2016, he never really wowed or caught anyone's attention for an extended period of time. In his rookie year, he was a part of a trade package for, at the time, superstar center DeMarcus Cousins. And the package that Sacramento got in return for DeMarcus, at the time being, was laughed at. It was viewed as a really embarrassing transaction for the Kings back then. To many, this was viewed as an all-time robbery and finesse. I think the Sacramento Kings just might have made the worst trade in NBA <laughs> history. In NBA history. Buddy healed and a protected 2017 first round and second round pick. Are you kidding? I mean, a heist took place last night, and the Sacramento Kings should be ashamed of themselves. And Buddy healed, who was by his only, was pretty much getting crapped on. But in hindsight, 2020. Is that what people say? Bro, let me know because I'm not trying to be out here looking crazy. Eh, actually, I'm gonna keep it in there because it sounded a little dramatic. But in hindsight 2020, the Pelicans have looked like the foolish ones in this trade. Largely due to unfortunate events though. But, you know, still, the Pelicans look like a bunch of dummies. Because they've been struggling like crazy even though Drew Holiday, AD, Nikola Mirotic, and Julius Randle has been putting up numbers this year. All of those guys are damn near having career years. But, you know, they still do need help. And they specifically need help on the perimeter. And what do you know? The guy that they traded away, that was laughed at and that was an afterthought. Buddy Heald, remember that dude? That is exactly who they need in their life right now. It's really funny how things pan out. As my dog Nav said in one of his songs, Be careful who you sh on, they might make it never know. Be careful who you sh on, they may make it, you never know. Because Buddy, Buddy Buckets, Buddy Heald has just put the entire league on notice. And he's letting it everyone knows that he belongs in the conversation of one of the best shooters in the league. Buddy is currently averaging nearly 20 points per game on 47% from the field and 43% from three on nearly seven attempts per game. Not only is his scoring up, but his defensive effort, efficiency, and all-around 
Arsenal game has improved too, but he is certainly going to be up there in the most improved player of the year award race. But uh, so is that man Pascal Siakam from the Toronto Raptors. Pascal has always been a super intriguing player because of his size, speed, agility, and experience. He's like what, 24 years old, soon to be 25 in April. But he actually hasn't been playing the sport of basketball for too long, so he still has a lot of learning and growing to do. This year is his third year in the league, and he's averaging 14, 6, and 3 on good efficiency. Pascal is one of the biggest reasons why the Raptors transformed their offense. Coach Nick Nurse has given him a bigger role, but this role that Pascal has been assigned is not too much to handle, but at the same time, he isn't being underutilized, and he isn't being asked to do something that he cannot do. And that, that right there has allowed him to thrive and play at nearly an all-star level. If we take a look at the man stats year by year by year. He's improved in every single category. Pascal has became a better shooter, passer, and defender. Speaking about defense, that is a big part of the reason why he's received so much praise as of recent. He's quick and light on his feet, but at the same time, he's so lengthy. Pascal Siakam deserves to be on this list. Now, going into the future, I don't know just how much he can expand on his game and mold himself into a star. That's that's the tricky part about him. But hey, even if he's not a star, he's still a damn good role player that every single team in the world would love to have their hands on if they already don't have a guy on their roster like him already. Julius Randle, talk about ups and downs. Julius went through it last year with the Lakers. Mans got benched and for the majority of the year was held on a leash by coach Luke Walton and was even thrown into all types of trade rumors last year. There was a certain vibe that was going on while he was a part of that organization for his last year. It almost seemed like the Lakers viewed him as a nuisance and a headache. And I feel like they made him feel like he was unwanted, which is one of the worst feelings that can cross by the human mind. He was viewed as a bonehead on the court and was too predictable as a player. While there may be just a little bit of truth to that, Julius did not listen to any of that. He just did him and by him doing him, he's going crazy right now in New Orleans, putting up numbers, averaging a career high in points on pretty efficient shooting from the field and three. Now New Orleans may not be a playoff team at the moment, even though they really should be. To me, the blame definitely doesn't go to Julius Randle. Uh-uh, he's been doing his thing and he's been holding it down. And he's finally starting to live up to the players some thought he possibly could be once he got drafted. I'm happy for Julius Randle. He deserves it. He deserves all the success that's coming his way. You should be happy for him too. On to the next breakout player on my fantastic, marvelous, magnificent list is Josh Richardson. Josh Richardson was one of the last players in my mind who would be performing at this level. I'm not too sure how you view him yourself, but for me, I've always just seen him as a really, really, really good role player, and that's it. But due to the situation Miami has been put in, D-Wade is old as hell, Goran Dragic is currently injured and declining and Dion is hurt. His success is understandable and I should have seen this coming. Since Miami is in need of that wing score since most of their guys are out, Josh Richardson was pretty much forced to step up. Now I don't know if Josh can sustain this level of play or even elevate it over the next few years. But hey, that's not what this video is about. In today's vid, we are focusing on what's happening right now in this moment. And right now, Josh has been having an eye-catching season and has dramatic improved his scoring numbers. He went from averaging 6 to 10 to 13 and now nearly averaging 19 points per game. And he's been doing this while taking on a bigger responsibility, facilitating and creating plays for others, while being a top defender in the league. He was asked to do a lot so suddenly. And due to that, maybe that's the reason why his shooting has been so... Yeah yucky from the field. A 40% field goal percentage is just not cutting it. So seeing that just kind of tells me that he may not be able to keep this up once Miami gets more talent on the way. But nevertheless, he's been impressive and has stepped up in order to give his team a shot at the playoffs. Without his play, Miami would for sure be a lottery team. Josh has stepped up this year and I would call this season for him a breakout year.
Okay, look, I don't know what it is and why it has been this way for the last two years for this team right here. This organization for the past decade has been known to be trash. But for some reason, these last two years, they've started off the season to a great start. The Orlando Magic? Okay, now look, obviously, as of recent, they've kind of cooled down. But to their standards, they've been actually pretty decent this year so far. And now, and I've been known that he's had the talent to put up these type of numbers. The only question that I had about him was his health and whether or not he could expand his game and so far he's done a great job at doing both and he's been doing these two things at the highest level ever of his career in my opinion dude is an all-star this year to me there is no other center in the east except for Joel Embiid who deserves more votes than this man to the all-star game now I know I just probably irritated the living hell out of Pistons fans just now and I know for a fact I'm going to see some Andre Drummond comments down below and it's okay but bruh i'm sorry i really don't care i think nicola deserves it this year anyways let's move on to the last player on my breakout player list that's 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 it actually but before i wrap up this vid i thought i'd tell you guys about my honorable mentions karis levert man was having a stellar season and was putting up impressive numbers he was leading brooklyn to a pretty impressive record until he went down with an unfortunate injury i would put him on the regular list all right i really would and i really wanted to do it but he just played 14 games so far this year and i need more than 14 games to prove that he's a breakout player another honorable mention is is dog i've been waiting to say this for the longest the low the low the low d'angelo russell this is the healthiest he's ever been since his second year in the league and so far he's been averaging a career high in efficiency points and assists the only reason why i had to leave him out of the list is because we didn't see a huge jump in his numbers he put up 16 points per game last year and only got up two more points this year and his efficiency is higher this year but it's kind identical to last year's the next honorable mention is god damn what's up with these dudes in brooklyn what's up with these guards spencer dinwiddie dude has dramatically improved his play every single year and has took another big leap this year now that i actually think about it all right he should have been a part of my breakout players list damn my bad so he's not an honorable mention he really deserves to be on this list dude's averaging like 17 points per game last year on great efficiency and he's improved the shooting numbers by a lot montrez harold he is one of the main reasons why los angeles has been so great great this year and he's been putting up impressive numbers off of the bench 15 7 and 2 is something great for someone of his caliber anyways that is the end of my list and the end of this video before i leave though i'm pretty sure that this is going to be the last vid that i post and i record in the year 2018 and before i end it i gotta just air out some things so if you don't want to listen and you want to leave it's okay i love you no homo, you could leave. This is more of just a message or whatever to myself. So around this time, exactly last year, I think I hit 1K subscribers. And I'm so freaking grateful for that. And right now we're approaching 10K. Again, I'm grateful as hell for what I've been able to accomplish. And I am super thankful for you guys. Uh, this desk, like everything. And I'm really proud of myself for the strides that I've made mentally physically and emotionally but you know it's time to kick things up to another level because i just like i want a lot more and what i want in the future ain't gonna just fly to me and hit me in the head i gotta go get it and i gotta go chase it i already know the steps that i gotta take in order to accomplish what i want to accomplish and you know from this point on no words just work next year 2019 at this time right now i'm gonna come back to this video and see if i got what i wanted so this is the end of the video man let me know what you guys think make sure you leave a like comment subscribe and all that and share the video too i really appreciate you guys for watching me supporting me and all of that so that, um but um <laughs> until then what is wrong with me I'll get right with you. No way, no way, no way. Yeah. Me back when I couldn't get a play. Yeah. No hope, I ain't have a place to stay. Yeah. I got the work, made it serve free the way.